one question that almost everyone asks at one time or another is why the seas and oceans salty and yet the rivers and lakes have fresh water with no salt in them. Well the answer to this question actually lies in the fact that the question itself is not actually quite correct. It's this slight error in the forming of the question that the answer actually sets. The oceans do contain quite a significant amount of substances either dissolved in them or suspended in them. And whilst the most common salt in the ocean is sodium chloride or common table salt, other major salts are things like sulfates along with magnesium, calcium, potassium salts, the remaining salts accounting for less than 1% of all of the salts in the oceans. Now at various different times attempts have been made to extract some of the metals like silver, gold and uranium which are all present in seawater. Whilst the percentage of these and other metals in the water is actually relatively low, because the amount of water in the oceans is so vast, if you were able to economically extract these and other metals you could satisfy virtually all probable needs for humanity for these metals. Unfortunately, extraction has proved rather difficult. The most successful method has been to evaporate off the water and leave behind the useful salts and metals. The problem here has been that the energy required to evaporate off the water is prohibitively expensive for the amount of valuable material recovered. Instead, what's been done is to collect the salt water into large flat basins in hot, dry countries and allow the sun to just evaporate off the water, leaving behind the salt in tiny proportions of other material, as this process partially explains why the oceans are salty. Now the sun is constantly evaporating off the top layer of the oceans, and it, as it does so, it increases the concentration of salts and other minerals in the water that remains behind. However, that doesn't explain how these substances came to be in the oceans in the first place. To find that out, you have to follow what happens to the water when it's evaporated from the oceans. That water, of course, eventually forms clouds and then rain, some of which falls back into the oceans, but the rest falls upon the land. Rain falling on the land slowly weathers or erodes away the soil and rock from the land, with that debris then being carried in the rivers of the world till eventually they reach the oceans or an inland sea. It's this eroded rock and soil which is a source for all the salts and the metals in the oceans. So rivers carrying supposedly fresh water down to the oceans are also carrying salt to the oceans. However the salt contents of the rivers is generally less than half of one percent of the concentration found in the oceans. That does mean if all this additional material is constantly being added to the oceans, are they steadily becoming saltier? Well the actual answer is no. In addition to the river water adding to the minerals in the oceans, volcanoes also do add significant amounts of material. However, at the same time, these minerals are also being taken out of the seawater, either by plants and animals with their bodies and shells, or it's settling onto the seafloor as sediment, being laid down as new layers of rocks, which, millions or even billions of years in the future, may again find themselves on the surface of the earth, being eroded by rainwater, and again, adding to the oceans, completing the cycle.